Hi, everyone. My name is Brandon Evans with the SANS Institute. And I wanted to take a moment to talk about one of the resources that I've published, the multi-cloud command line interface cheat sheet. When you're starting off in the cloud, you're going to be working with the user interfaces for the cloud, be that the AWS console, the Azure portal, or the Google Cloud console. And there are a couple of issues using the user interfaces alone. One of those issues is that the UIs change all of the time. So there's a great value in being able to consistently perform operations in the cloud. And one of the ways we can do that is with the command line. Additionally, knowing these commands, you can create some automation, such as cron jobs or lambdas that can do regular security checks. And finally, this will give you a little bit of empathy for your developers. They have to write commands like this all of the time to do their job. So let's try to do the same thing for security purposes. So I will show you how to download this cheat sheet at the end of the presentation, which you can use both digitally or you can print it out. I've got my copy right here. So let's get started. And before we proceed, let's remind ourselves that these commands are gonna be very version specific. So if you try one of these commands and they do not work the way that you expected, take a look at the versions that we tested these commands with. All of these commands should work with most versions, but sometimes there are discrepancies because just like the UIs are changing and the cloud is changing, the command lines oftentimes change as well. So to demonstrate these commands, we're going to use the SANS Cloud Flight Simulator. This is a new web interface that SANS students can use in order to perform cloud exercises in their browser without the need for a local virtual machine. My uh, co-author, Eric Johnson, who's also an instructor and has written many courses for SANS, recently published a blog post talking a little bit more about the flight simulator. And I am overjoyed to let you know that the flight simulator is now supported in both the new SEC 510 cloud security controls and mitigations, as well as the new SEC 540 cloud security and DevSecOps automation. So enough of the courses for right now, let's dive into the cheat sheet. So the first thing we need to do is connect our command line interface to the clouds and authenticate. So there are several ways that we can accomplish this. For AWS, for example, we can run AWS configure to interactively authenticate. So I'm not gonna share my full access key ID and secret access key right now, but once you have one for an IAM user, you can plug it into here and then the secret access key here, you could specify your region name, US East one, and that's what I'm gonna use in my case. And you can specify the default JSON, uh, the default output format you wanna use, which is in my case, JSON. And I'll explain why I love JSON so much in just a little bit. Now for Azure, the easiest way to accomplish this is interactively with AZ login. And you can do the same thing with Google Cloud. But in Google Cloud, you can also authenticate using a service account with a JSON key file. And then you could specify the project you wanna work within. So I've already set up all of my credentials to validate that I am now successfully logged in. I'm gonna type in AWS STS get caller identity. And it's gonna show that I'm currently authenticated as this user called cloud security. And then in Azure, I'm gonna do Azure AD for Active Directory, signed in user show. And this is gonna show that I'm currently logged in as a SAN student. And finally, G Cloud off list. We can see that I'm authenticated into my project, SEC 510 Evans Brandon with the cloud security service account. Awesome. Now let's talk about the second section and probably the most important section for this cheat sheet, which is learning how to do filtering and querying. These are so useful in order to get data out of these commands. The commands that we're running are going to print out a whole lot of data. And oftentimes we only care about a subset of that data. So by using filtering and querying, we can not only focus our energy on the data that we care about, 
but we can take the output of those commands and plug them into other commands as we will see shortly. So first of all, I'm gonna do AWS IAM list users. And before I query it, you can see there's a whole lot of information here that we may or may not care about. So let's go ahead and query for specifically the names of these users, starting off by speci specifically looking at the first user in this array of users. Make sure to spell it exactly with the right casing because if you type username with a lowercase n, this will not work. So we can see that the first user in this list, the user at the zeroth position is named cloud security. If we wanted to show all of the user's usernames, we can get rid of that zero to show all of the items of the array and specifically the username of all of the items in the array. So then moving on to Azure, we can use AZ network, ooh, network VNet list to show all of our virtual networks, which provides a whole lot of data. Let's say we just wanted to know the CIDR block for a particular subnet, we could query the first network, the first subnet, and then the address prefix. And there we go. Now, while I do love the built-in querying mechanisms for these CLIs, sometimes they are limited. They definitely have some shortcomings. So for everything else, I like to use this tool called JQ. And this tool is perfect for being able to process and query JSON data. It's a very complex tool, and SANS actually has a dedicated cheat sheet on this subject called the JSON and JQ Quick Start Guide, which you may want to check out as well. So for example, let's rewrite the last command in this particular area for Google to use JQ instead. So we're going to look at our SQL instances. We're going to list them. We're going to use the JSON format because you can't use JQ unless you're using JSON. And then we are going to pipe this to JQ and list all of the individual items. And it also pretty prints it so you can see it with syntax highlighting. Then specifically, I want to select the instance that starts with the name sec510. And this is going to show me specifically the instance that I care about, this particular database that starts with the name sec510 right over here. And it has a unique string over here that I use uh, in my course often to make sure we all have our unique set of resources. You'll see another example of that later on in this presentation. So I wanted to mention that uh, really quickly. So now let's move on to the first specific item of this cheat sheet, which is on how you can SSH to a virtual machine on the public cloud. Now, this is useful because if the public IP address of your virtual machine changes, you will be able to use the same command in order to be able to actually connect to the machine. You wouldn't have to update your IP address every time. And this is so useful that we've actually created an alias for doing exactly this in SEC 510. So we have this alias called SSH AWS. And if we look at that alias, it's going to SSH Ubuntu at, and then it's going to get the public IP address for AWS. So if we show what that function looks like, AWS public IP, we will see that this is the same command that we had from before on the cheat sheet, the one that's going to look specifically for the VM that we care about, in this case, the SEC 510 VM, and give us the public IP address, which we will then feed to the SSH command. Similarly, we have the Azure public IP and the GCP public IP. And these are the commands that are on the cheat sheet. So instead of typing them out every single time, you might want to put this in as an alias or a function in your workstation. Now let's move on to talk a little bit about storage usage. We can explore our storage, 
using our CLI, and we could also modify our storage using our CLI. So first, let's take a look at all the things that we have in our S3 for our AWS account. We can see that we have a variety of different buckets here. And I'm going to look at the contents of this corporate bucket over here. And this has a secret memo that we analyze in some of our labs in SEC 510, Cloud Security Controls and Mitigations. Now, that's to list the content. We can also download the content of this like so. We could do AWS S3, CP. Then we're going to uh, copy the item over here. So that's, we first need the bucket name. Let's see. I'm not going to type out that entire bucket name. It's quite long. There we go. And we're going to specifically download the memo.pdf and we're going to download it, let's say, to here. And it should say that the download was successful. Now, if I want to upload a file, I just do the same thing in the opposite direction. So I would say AWS S3 CP uh, for copy. Let's say this readme file that I happen to have over here. I'm going to copy it to this documents bucket over that we can see bucket up here. We can copy it to that bucket like so, and it'll say that it'll upload. I write these commands all the time, by the way, and I make mistakes all the time. So if you're making mistakes in this process, don't feel bad. It takes a really long time to get it perfect, if you can ever get it perfect. And I would argue you probably can't. Now on Azure, let's take a look at all the storage accounts that we have. So we'll do AZ storage account list. And I want to find the one specific for 510. And just for the sake of argument, sometimes it's easier to just use rep. Good old grep will get the job done in many cases. So storage accounts have containers and containers have objects in Azure. So now I'm going to look at the contents of this particular container. So we are going to use the command over here, az storage container list account name. And we're going to plug that in here. And it's going to show that we have several containers, including the documents container, which is analogous to the documents bucket we showed above. And then finally, gsutil, which is for uh, GCP storage, is very similar, very similar to AWS. Not a whole lot of differences between this and what we've seen before. Now, finally, we're going to talk a little bit about encryption. And encryption is actually very difficult to do, surprisingly. Uh, and as a result, for time purposes, I'm going to quickly demonstrate encryption and decryption in AWS. So we are going to do AWS KMS encrypt key ID. And the key that I want to use is this built-in one in my environment. And then the plain text is going to be SANS. So we're going to encrypt the word SANS. We're then going to extract the ciphertext. So we can do this with JQ, cipher text blob. And then we can write that to a file called encrypted.txt, for example. And oh, before we do that, sorry, there's one more thing we have to do, according to the cheat sheet. We have to decode this with base64. So this is going to write it as actual raw data. And then when we do AWS KMS decrypt, same key ID, and we are going to plug in for the ciphertext a file blob, specifically the one that we just wrote, we will see that the output in plain text is SANS. So I hope that you'll find this cheat sheet very useful. In order to access it, just go to sans.org slash cloud-security or just sans.org slash cloud. 
And if you scroll down to the bottom, we have a lot of free resources that I recommend checking out. You can go to the cheat sheet portion, posters and cheat sheets, and scroll down and you can access the multi-cloud cheat sheet over here. If you enjoyed this video, you might wanna check out Eric Johnson and I's course, SEC 510 Cloud Security Controls and Mitigations. SEC 510 provides students with practical techniques and configurations that can help organizations prevent security incidents from becoming breaches. We use a lot of frameworks here, but we focus on the real controls that are gonna actually matter to solve real attacks. If you wanna learn more, go to sans.org slash sec510, and please make sure to click this course demo button. And once you log into your SANS portal account, you'll get a free nearly hour of content that you can watch to see if sec510 is the right course for you. Thanks for watching, take care. And as always, I hope that you'll be able to keep the cloud safe because oh my goodness, we need a lot of help in that regard. Take care.